Welcome to video 155 in series 3, and now I'll fill in the NPC state melee attack script. Okay, so open up the melee attack script, and I'll just fill in the first part. Okay, so what we have here, private read only, NPC state pattern, NPC, private float, distance to target, public, NPC state, melee attack, pass in the parameter of the type NPC state pattern, and that is NPC state pattern, and NPC is equal to NPC state pattern. So I'll jump over to the state pattern script and just enter that in. So now we'll create an instance of the melee attack script. So that's melee attack state is equal to new NPC state melee attack. Pass in this script, the NPC state pattern. Okay, so jumping back. Inside of the update state, I'll have two methods that I need to write. First one is look, and the other is try to attack. I will have a to patrol state condition. And for this, the method to call is keep walking. And I'll also have npc.current state is equal to npc.patrol state. All right, next for the alert state. I'll have there keep walking, call that method, and npc.current state is equal to npc.alert state. I will also have a to, to pursue state, so this one is also call the method keep walking, and npc.current state is equal to npc.pursue state. Now all of these have keep walking because when the melee attack is done, I'm just going to tell the uh, a nav mesh agent to stop moving so that way the enemy stands still and they face the player and then they perform the melee attack. Alright, I won't need the uh, other ones of course and I'm just gonna have here void keep walking and that is npc.mynavmeshagent.resume and npc.npcmaster.call event npc walk anim. Okay, I'll now put the look method up above. So that's void look if npc.pursue target is null. Then just jump to the patrol state. So to patrol state, call that method, return. Don't do the rest of this method for an obvious reason. So no pursue target, then there's nothing to attack. Okay, collider and array, colliders is equal to physics.overlap sphere, npc.transform.position, comma, npc.melee attack range comma npc dot my enemy layers so it's got quite a small uh, radius this um, uh, this overlap sphere and just to capture what is within range of attacking if colliders dot length is zero then npc pursue target is equal to null set it to null to patrol state so call the to patrol state method return jump out of this uh, look method now, if, uh, if there are colliders captured, means, yep, validly, then we do have uh, something to attack. So for each collider, col in colliders, if col.transform.root is uh, equal to npc.pursue target, then return. And this means that our pursue target is valid and is still within range, within our melee attacking range. So we return out of this. We want to get out of this method before this happens. npc.pursueTarget is equal to null to patrol state. Call that method. So that's just like a uh, if uh, everything doesn't work and then uh, if really, really that uh, pursue target is really not there, is really not in range anymore, then really we should just go back to the patrol state and that will auto, if like the patrol state, the uh, NPC sees a valid target, then they'll start pursuing again, blah, blah, blah. But uh, so this way we make sure that the uh, melee attacking NPC only attacks as they are supposed to. Okay, next I will put in the uh, try to attack method. So this is void try to attack. If npc.pursue target is not equal to null, then npc.mesh renderer flag.material.color is equal to color.magenta. If time dot time greater than n greater than npc dot next attack and not npc dot is melee attacking, so they shouldn't already be carrying out a melee attack. 
uh, in order to do one, then npc.nextattack is equal to time.time .time plus npc.attack rate. Okay, so that's just so to limit how many attacks the NPC can do uh, per second or whatever time duration it is anyway. So if vector3.distance npc.transform.position, comma npc.pursuetarget.position is less than or equal to npc.melee attack range. Vector3 new pos is equal to new vector3 npc.pursuetarget.position.x, comma npc.transform.position.y, comma npc.pursuetarget.position.z. And then the next thing, npc.transform.lookat new pos and uh, oops let's should go on the next line npc.npcmaster.callEvent npc attack anim so what i'm just doing here is if the npc is within range of its pursue target uh, then quite simply the uh, npc should look directly at its target so it'll just instantly start looking at its target and then it will call the event npc attack anim. So the uh, npc will go into the attack melee attack animation. And then we just say this flag here npc dot is melee attacking is equal to true. And that'll ensure that this method can't be called again while the animation is running. That's why we have the flag there to just stop that from happening. And if you remember, it's the uh, melee attack animation of the golem that uh, drives the attack and inside of it there is an event on enemy attack. And from that, that will then determine if damage is to be applied to the target of this melee attack. All right. Now, if uh, it's out of range, so if this if block here, else, put an else statement for that, to pursue state. It means we're out of range, but we still have a target, so we should try and pursue and get closer. Okay, now, if the time dot time uh, was not uh, enough, not enough time had elapsed, or uh, the flag is melee attacking uh, is still true, then we go to the patrol state. So just say else to patrol state and just jump out of there. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Now, of course, if this going to the patrol state causes any slowdown in the melee attacking, then a solution is to instead change that to pursue state instead. So then uh, the NPC will just jump into the pursue state instead and just continue to pursue the player. All right. Okay, so I think uh, that's it. It should be uh, enough. Uh, I think it'll work. So let me just jump in, have a look uh, at the golem. And I did have, yes, I do have has melee attack. Uh, but of course, it needs the uh, animation uh, to do anything. So I guess what I could do is, uh, let's see, what could I do? Hmm. I guess I could just watch what happens. Because it won't, uh, of course, apply any damage to us. There's no animation involved. Okay. All right. So it's looking at us. It's pursuing. Okay, it's doing something. Well, it would normally attack here. It would continue. I guess it would continue to attack us at this point. All right. So then it comes towards us. Okay. And it would melee attack us again. All right. So uh, I guess that's it. Okay. That's good, at least it looks like um, it's uh, working all right. Yep, he's noted us, he's pursuing, and we can move around. And then once he's close enough, yep, he'll change into... It might be a bit hard to see on the screen the color there, but it is changing to magenta. Okay, so I guess that's enough for this video. Uh, next video, I'll write the uh, range attack uh, version. Uh, we won't get to see the results of that till way later, but anyhow... Uh, still interesting, so keep on going, and I'll see you in the next video.